Yo, this is the Sky City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today and these stories come from Warrington. Initially, this was going to be a video about a hitman that had disguised himself as a pizza delivery man to attempt to assassinate a gang rival. But because of news that emerged today, I was able to link three different stories. A lot of you will remember the Cullen twins. I covered this story a few weeks ago on the channel in relation to Leon Cullen being arrested and extradited from Dubai after being on the run for several years. He has now pled guilty to a string of offences in court and he was originally from Warrington and he was the most wanted man at one point last year in the country. Cullen was brought before Liverpool Crown Court on Friday and the 33-year-old admitted four charges that he faced, namely conspiracy to supply firearms, conspiracy to possess firearms and ammunition and conspiracy to supply cocaine. He'll be sentenced at the same court next month due to pleading guilty. Cullen, formerly from Orford, spoke to confirm his identity, his date of birth and his hometown before entering his guilty plea. Defence barrister Oliver Cook told the court, in terms of the role of Leon Cullen in the gang, it's agreed that his role was different but equivalent to his brother, who has already been jailed for 27 years and his name is Anthony Cullen. He's scheduled to learn the sentence he will receive during a hearing on Friday, April the 30th, which is expected to last two to three hours. And there's a reason for that because of how much evidence in this case. Cullen appeared via video link at HMP Manchester, wearing grey jumpers and sporting a beard and dark hair. And when he heard the date of Friday the 13th, he said that he was unlucky. Mr. Cook said, I think Mr. Cullen would prefer the case to be dealt with as soon as possible. They later go on to say in the Warrington Guardian that the Cullen gang was brought down by the police after a series of dawn raids in January of 2018. They found three kilos of cocaine, £200,000 in cash, after an 18-month investigation named Operation Samurai. The illicit dealings netted the criminal they said £300,000 in profit a month as they used firearms to threaten rivals and to encourage people to pay debts. Five guns and ammunition were recovered from a loft in a house in Carrington Park when officers executed a search warrant back in 2018 and they also found another gun at the foot of a bed along with a lot of bullets and they connected this to the twins. They found an AK-47, a pump action shotgun, automatic pistols, revolvers as well as a silencer. Police said they dealt in class A drugs and cannabis in several areas around the location and it is believed they had links to the northeast. Other people associated to the twins have been jailed for a total of 185 years and most of them cases were back in 2019. Leon Cullen managed to avoid arrest with rumours over the last two years placing him in Spain, Thailand and the United Arab Emirates and he was eventually detained in Dubai in January of 2020 on an international arrest warrant nearly two years after leaving the country. There was a lengthy extradition process that only concluded last month and he was charged over the conspiracy following a joint operation by Cheshire Police and the Organised Crime Unit and National Crime Agency. Over the past few years, they've had a lot of help from Interpol and also authorities in the UAE. They say over the past few years, the Cullen twins have been linked to many high-profile incidents in Warrington and they are associated to a number of major trials. One of the cases back in February 2018 was about a grenade that was found in a driveway of a family home on Cleveland Road in Orford in February of that year. Allegedly, this was done in a revenge attack after a series of tit-for-tats for damage that had been done to the Cullen's home after it was bricked and a BMW that they owned was torched. What this actually shows is there was a feud that was starting in the local area. The Cullens also had an attack on a gym that was called Smithy's Gym in Bewsley and this was in September 2019 and accomplices were alleged to have fired shots at the front door and windows of a house in Bolton before attempting to frame somebody else. The Luger pistol used in the shooting and a quantity of cocaine were planted in the car of a man who Cullen was in a dispute with after they had both been romantically involved with the same woman. An anonymous tip-off was also made to the police in relation to this. So of course there's no proof that they did that but that is alleged by the police that they were tactically trying to take out people they didn't like by setting them up for shootings. Most recently they then go on to say associates were shot and also their dad was shot at. 
in gangland plots and an innocent man was shot down on Poplar Avenue in Orford again when assailants posed as a delivery driver. Before we talk about the delivery driver attack and the way that it's connected to this story, I'd like to talk about the man that was connected to the grenade, Billy Jones. He was from Warrington and he had a long history in the area. He was actually the youngest killer in 2006 when he was convicted of murder, age 16. He was the ringleader of an attack on a dad called Michael Tika and he's 30 years old when he was convicted back in 2019 for the grenade attack in the Orford area. Four children were sleeping upstairs in the home when this grenade was placed under the car and the police showed video of them exploding it. It was placed under the Vauxhall insignia on Cleveland Road in February 2018 and police were alerted via an anonymous call from a phone box. All the residents in the local area were evacuated and even the nearby McDonald's. Bomb disposal squads came in and carried out controlled explosions on nearby waste ground and these are the sort of things that would definitely get the NCA on your back. When you start planting grenades outside people's houses and you have access to AK-47 assault rifles, this is when it stops being a small estate gangland feud and it becomes almost military grade. The police say that the twins were involved and responsible for a lot of these tit for tats. And when they arrested and jailed Jones, they did it on the basis that he did it for them. And in the main story of this video is about the three men that were found guilty of the authored conspiracy to shoot a man, but they shot an innocent man. I can't confirm if this was the father of the boys, but they say that they were trying to shoot the son of the man they actually shot. And police do mention that the Cullen's father was a target at one point. Police have released a footage that showed the moment that Aaron Breverton posed as the pizza delivery guy and walked up to a house on Poplar's Avenue in Orford on the 25th of April 2020 and fired three shots at a 56-year-old man. One of the bullets left him with life-changing injuries to his leg and the 24-year-old gunman fled away before turning round and firing further shots at the house. He would then go on to escape in a van with getaway driver Anthony Morris and Louis Fitzpatrick and the trio are alleged to have taken out the attack on behalf of a 34-year-old who is suspected of plotting other attacks to shoot rivals. Breverton previously admitted being the gunman but 25-year-old Fitzpatrick and 23-year-old Morris denied being part of a conspiracy to shoot the victim's stepson who was not at the address at the time of the attack. On Friday the 12th of March, a jury found Breverton, Fitzpatrick and Morris guilty of conspiracy to cause grievous bodily harm to the 28-year-old stepson following a three-week trial, even though he wasn't there. In the hours leading up to the attack, Breverton was seen travelling with Fitzpatrick and Warrington in order to carry out reconnaissance. Shortly after 7pm, Morris travelled from his workplace in North Wales to pick up Breverton and Fitzpatrick in Liverpool and transport them to the crime scene. Breverton deliberately left his mobile phone at home and used the phone belonging to Morris to communicate with Fitzpatrick as the duo made the journey in the van. When they reached the destination, Fitzpatrick is believed to have handed Breverton the gun and he was seen on CCTV making his way to the house and carrying out the attack. The victim attempted to shut the door before Breverton opened fire. However, one body hit the floor and another travelled through the door and hit the man in his knee. A 999 call was made to officers and armed police attended the scene. They launched what police say was a fast-paced and painstaking investigation to find those responsible for the shooting. The white van was identified as being from the garage that Maurice had previously worked at on 5th Avenue in Liverpool and he was arrested by police in Southport two days later. Officers searching the van discovered a hide and a mobile phone that was found inside. Maurice was in custody and being questioned and detectives continued to examine CCTV. They carried out forensic and telecommunication inquiries which led to the arrest of Breverton and Fitzpatrick in Liverpool on Wednesday the 6th of May. Clothing was recovered from Breverton's apartment in City View in Liverpool along with a Glock handgun in the extractor fan of the oven. There was also several bullets in a magazine in the bathroom and a smoke grenade and five grand in cash. And ironically, the gun was not even the same one used in the shooting. They also found an encrypted mobile phone and four grand in cash was found at Fitzpatrick's home in Liverpool. Both men were taken into custody for questioning and subsequently charged. Detective Chief Inspector Mike Evans from the Serious Organised Crime Unit said, This was a coordinated attack that took weeks of sophisticated planning and preparation, with each individual having a specific role to ensure the hit was carried out. Breverton shot an innocent man on his doorstep and left him with injuries that will affect him for the rest of his life. And the victim has undergone several rounds of surgery since the attack. Superintendent Simon Megan of Warrington Local Policing Unit said the shooting brought fear to the local community. 
and understandably caused a significant amount of concern with locals. While the investigation was ongoing, we made high visibility patrols in the area to reassure residents that we were doing our job. Louis Fitzpatrick, previously of Liverpool, was found guilty of conspiracy to murder and grievous bodily harm with intent to endanger life. Aaron Breverton, aged 24, previously from Liverpool, was found guilty of conspiracy to commit grievous bodily harm and conspiracy to possess a firearm with intent to endanger life. He was also guilty of possession of ammunition with intent to commit murder. They will be sentenced at a later date at Liverpool Crown Court and we definitely keep you updated on that conviction. So the police say that these are indirectly or even directly connected to each other, being as they're all occurring in the same area. And they're all involved, the same groups that have been warring with each other for a long time. So I'd really want to hear what people have to say on all these stories. And please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Peace.